Hey, what's up guys? So a lot of you are interested in how I modded my old Cooler Master Quickfire TK in my previous video. So due to popular requests, I'll be showcasing in this video how I modded the board to achieve this sound. To give a bit of history behind this keyboard, it was a birthday gift I got around late 2012 to early 2013 when I was first getting into PC gaming and my laptop's keyboard was starting to not work. Throughout the years of owning the keyboard and before I got my first custom keyboard, let's just say it's been the receiving end of some gamer ages to say the least. Anyways, before we begin, I also wanted to preface that in order to perform some of the modifications we're doing to the board, you will need to own and know how to operate a soldering iron. So just like with any other keyboard disassembly, the first thing we need to do is remove all of the keycaps. You may also notice that I don't have the slot switches in the keyboard, and in your case you might have some Cherry MX browns, reds, or blues. Currently, I have the Gatoron Cap V2 switches in, which I wasn't really big of a fan of, so I'm going to be desoldering them for the new Gatoron KS9 Pro Yellows. After removing the old crusty shined up gear keycaps, you want to put them exactly where they belong. Yeah, directly in the trash. Wait, 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 before you throw them away, we still need the spacebar. It's a weird non-standard size, so it might be hard to find a replacement for. I also wanted to mention that Domiki has kitting that supports 6.5U spacebars, but with my own experience, the Domiki 6.5U spacebar is too tight and doesn't return properly so it's probably best to just keep the original just in case. So once you're done with that, you can flip the board over and start unscrewing the bottom case screws. Looking at the underside of the case, there are 7 screws in total, but 2 of the screws will be underneath the case feed, so you have to peel them off to access the screws. Yo. With all the case screws undone, we now have to undo the case clips. You can do this a couple of different ways, like prying the clips apart with a plastic spudger. Personally for me, the easiest way to undo the case clips is to just put the unscrewed assembly down on a soft surface like a carpeted floor or bed and just push down. Now with the top case gone, we need to unscrew the four screws on the plate to separate the inner assembly from the bottom tray. Once you've unscrewed the four plate screws, gently lift up the assembly and unscrew the daughter board from the lower case. You also have to unscrew this thing from the bottom of the PCB. I'm not really sure what it is, but my guess is that it's for ESD protection maybe? With all of the parts separated, you now have to desolder the old switches from the PCB. Here's a picture of a bag with Cherry MX Blues that were originally in the keyboard that I desoldered. Don't actually throw these away though, you can make some neat Franken switches from them like Holy Chickies. Or you can just reuse the cherry tops of the switches to place onto something else. With the switches desoldered, you can now remove them from the plate and PCB. So now separate the plate from the PCB. You can see on the PCB that I've used the KVD fans pour on switch pads, which I'll be keeping on there since it doesn't make the sound too marbly like PE foam, which I think most of us are tired of by now. Here's a close-up of the plate that I've spray painted black and used weather seal vinyl adhesive foam as a makeshift plate foam. Hold on, stop the music. We gotta get serious for a sec. The next mod we're about to do is pretty destructive and I don't recommend that you follow this unless you really know what you're doing. I personally messed up pretty bad on this part. This mod makes the build overall more annoying and tedious to complete. <sighs> I know, it looks really bad. So what I tried to do was turn the plate into a half plate, but I didn't have the proper tools to do it and it just came out looking really really bad. I mean, it is what it is, but it kind of worked I guess. So you can see here now that I've soldered on the plateless alphas. It was about as fun as you'd think. Soldering 3 pin plate mounted switches without a plate at all. It went terribly. This is just another reason why I don't recommend the half plate mod for this build. I've gone ahead and finished soldering the rest of the switches onto the scuffed plate, and I've upgraded to some Duroc plate mounted stabs. Before you put your soldering iron away, make sure that the daughterboard cables are all still properly soldered correctly onto the PCB. A couple of times during the build, one of these cables would snap off and I would go back and solder them. So yeah, just make sure that these are all properly soldered still. So now that we're done soldering, we can do the tape mod onto the back of the PCB. I've done one layer of tape, but the trick is to really mold the tape tightly onto the back of the PCB and make sure to cut holes for the case standoffs. Now we can address the lower case. Okay, for now ignore the foam and the other stuff I put in the bottom of the case, we'll talk about that later on. To soften the typing field, I cut off four of the bottom tray standoffs that don't get screwed in. Originally in my first rebuild of this keyboard, I did a silicone pour to fill the bottom of the case, but this time when I opened it, I added a little something extra. 
To fill the bottom of the case, I've cut away pieces of the silicone and added some iron tire weights to make the acoustics of the board more dense and make the keyboard feel more heavy and premium in hand. I also used pieces of the weather seal foam along the top and bottom of the case. I also put a layer of zip and fit shelf liner above the silicone and tire weights. I definitely went a little bit overboard with this part, but I topped the case off with some cotton to give it a really full sound. Both cotton and polyfill work for this step. Just like from earlier, I've put an o-ring onto each of the case standoffs and onto each of the four screws to o-ring mount the plate before screwing everything back together. With the four o-rings on the standoffs, we can start to reassemble the keyboard and put everything back in place. Screw slowly and make sure not to over tighten the o-rings. Finally, place the top case back on, screw the bottom case screws, throw on some keycaps and boom, you're done. For the first few configurations, I used PVT caps for a deeper sound, but for my personal configuration, I topped the board with GMK white and black for that good GMK clack. I'm only going to show shorter sound clips for the comparison, but the full sound tests will be at the end of the video. And with that, let's hear how it sounds. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching if you've made it this far. I hope I explained everything thoroughly enough and if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to reply. I'll leave you with the full sound test including the original I had with the cap switches and full plate. Enjoy and until next time.